and my friend will come back. After I reported to the police, we left the apartment. I thought that this nightmare was just stopped there. It didn't, because the next thing he went is he went to the media of Jamaica and said that the allegations were not true. But let me remind you this. If you go onto my Facebook, the only thing that I said was that I was sexually assaulted. I didn't name him. My friend said that she was going to pull herself off the tour because of the sexual assault. She also didn't name him. Yet, on the Jamaica media, if you search, Jamaican artists rape Australia. Right there. There was zero consideration of the fact that he just did that to me. With no remorse whatsoever. When visibly, I said no. Verbally, I said no. Stop it. You're hurting me. Ignored. Blatantly ignored. Yet he can pretend like everything was okay when my friend came back. I was shell-shocked, sitting at the computer. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Before that, he has tried to kiss me, as mentioned, during the Indonesia leg of the trip. He did also attempt, and I pushed him away. I said, no. During then, he respected my boundaries. But this one, zero respect for boundaries. Blatant ignoring. Oh, no. No is a freaking universal word. Two letters. No. I think that's pretty clear. So yeah. You did that to me. It has changed entirely my life because I lost. Not just a part of myself. I lost myself. I didn't know who I was anymore. You don't feel like there's an identity of anymore? You're caught in a constant trauma. You're caught in a constant reminder. Yet, here you are, saving your skin on the media, saying that the allegations are not true. What allegations? We didn't call you. You called yourself out. What allegations, pray tell? If you have heart, then you should be upfront, admit your mistake, and tell people what you have done. Not hide behind like a coward. Not run to the media immediately and spread false news. Journalists, isn't it your duty to actually fact check before you report? All the things I've spoken here are facts. They were in the police report. They were publicly shared. If you want to look for it, it's there. There's always this saying, 
that I keep hearing. Oh, he has a family, so he can't be a pub. And this is precisely why there's so many of such cases. Isn't it scary? The thought that the person next to you might be a pub, a hidden pub and you don't know it? I don't trust justice by criminal law because in Australia, it is innocent until proven guilty. In Singapore, however, it is guilty until proven innocent. I don't know how it is in Jamaica. But I want to get this story out there. Get my story out there. How it has affected me. How it has made me to not even recognize myself. For one and a half years, I was living in a dream where I don't exist. Where everything was reactionary. Where I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I didn't want to shower. People couldn't touch me. I had to watch cartoons. I could only watch cartoons because the rest of things was so triggering. And let me tell you this, so many times, I thought about killing myself because I didn't know how it was going to work. I prayed for justice. I was a believer in justice. I believed in the police. But then I learned that the laws are here to protect the pups. Still the power is with the people. It's up to every single individual to decide what is right. I don't know whether there are any other people who might be victims. Under his hand, I don't expect you to come forward and say anything. This is my choice. And the only thing I'm doing is honouring my own choices. To upfront and call him out. If you want to hear snippets of what exactly happened, you can find it in verse 2 of Not All That Glitters Is Gold. That was penned and written by my friend. That is now an anthem for survivors. Let's not talk about me too. Let's just talk about this very horrible concept of how many people are pups in disguise. Of how many cases I've heard. Of how many red tapes survivors have to jump through. To seek justice and redress for their own case. Yeah, people are so quick to dismiss. Either say this person dressed slutty, or you know, this person is a certain way, or promiscuous. Promiscuous. Sorry. Well, I'm none of that. I'm a straight individual with a 14 years stable relationship with my partner who has supported me throughout this whole thing. That this person, Richie Stevens, has blatantly ignored. This effect of what he has done does not just stop at me. You've created a wave of impact. You've hurt me, but then you've hurt my mother, who blames herself for letting me even go to Australia. You've heard my partner for not calling you out sooner or bashing you when you first did that to me in Singapore by kissing me. 
You've had my friend who treated you like a mentor. Who wanted to really grow reggae. The scene in Asia to represent Jamaica proper because she loves Jamaica. The many, many things that you've put on the line, that you've affected the lives of so many of my loved ones. It's also one of the reasons why I'm coming out to say this right now. A simple assault does not only affect the survivor. It never does. I'm not asking you to hold signs or picket rails. I simply want the truth to be known. I simply want my side of the story to be heard. And to come forward and tell you that all of the things that he has accused or allegate that we actually did, we are Chinese girls wanting money, we were this, we were that, not true. My friend organized the tour. She herself is her own established artist. No need cloud. No cloud needed. I have a life. I'm not some roadie on the road. Not only was I documenting, I was also helping with the administrative stuff. I was very much a part of my friend's team. We trusted you. I drew my boundary with you by calling you uncle. Because clearly, uncle means, yes, I acknowledge you're there, but you cannot touch me. I do not love you. I'm in love with my partner. And we've actually kept in contact the whole time throughout the tour, all the way until the incident happened and that's when I disappeared and he knew something was up. You have a family. Yet, without a blink of an eye, you can still do that to me. You have a daughter. So who says just because you're a family man means you're a saint? These are just the things that I want people to think about. Again, these are all facts that you can look up. And I'm addressing just the other concerns that I've heard. The truth will be known. And in one way or another, You can't run from the truth. Thank you, everybody.